Well, and I'll thank you and Senator Grassley for having, because this is the first of many conversations I think we're going to have. Uh, Mr. Schweikert, is that, did I say your name right? Schweitert. Schweitert, I'm sorry. It's a mouthful. How about David? Okay, uh, David. <laughs> um, are car companies making electric vehicles because they have to or they want to? Senator, I think there's no question, as you noted earlier, that electrification is the future. Uh, so for purposes... Well, I mean, is it the future based on consumer demand or government policy? I would say it's a mix. Obviously, I think regulations are... Okay. I, I, yep. I agree. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, why does... Does China make electric vehicles because of climate policy? No, it's primarily a response to strategic manufacturing policy and air pollution reduction goals. Um, they basically strategically selected electric vehicles as an opportunity to leapfrog internal combustion engine manufacturing, which is an area that the West, the United States, but and others dominate. But it's not driven by climate. I mean, it's if not you really worried about climate. climate, you wouldn't use a coal-fired plant to to power a, an electric vehicle plant, right? Well, with China's average grid mix, it actually does reduce greenhouse gas emissions relative to an internal so combustion So are engine. they making all these cars because they're worried about the environment? They're worried primarily about air pollution and their strategic role in manufacturing in the global okay. market. Ms. Heinemann, uh, uh, why do we make electric cars? Is it because of consumer demand or government policy? Um, my sense is it's it's uh, it's uh, per my my colleague to the, my left is it's because it's it's a combination of the two, but okay. you know so, per market economy, so right. the government does work. So to some help people the want signals. them, right? So David, if we did away with the mandate or the goal of having half the vehicle fleet electrified, a government policy, uh, by 2035, what percentage of the cars on the road do you think would be electric without a mandate? Senator, that's a very good question. Last year was 9.5%, so if we fast forward, um, it's it's hard to say. A lot of it depends on how reliant well, we are. Well, let's just say we did away with the mandate. Trump says he wants to do away. Will, will that end electric car manufacturing in America? No, however, we might have unbalanced things as it relates to whether or not the U.S. is competitive as it relates to some of those supportive policies, whether okay. it's tax incentives or... Right. Yes. So, Ms. Uh, Heinemann, um, is that right, Hinman? It's Hinman. Okay, all right. Is the dominance of China irreversible in the supply chain? I believe not, absolutely not. I think the U.S. and its allies and friends, if we move quickly to create agile, responsive, and coordinated policies, could flip the script and um, reestablish market dynamics in okay. the global Can economy. I want to talk to you about that in more detail. So. Forget about what we do here, Mr. Jenkins. Does everybody agree China's going to continue to make a bunch of electric vehicles no matter what we do? Correct. Everybody agree with that? Yes, sir. For whatever reason, they're going to make a bunch of them. And uh, it seems to me that the supply chain to make a battery, uh, if we don't change our policy, is going to be so dominated by China, we may just have lost this entire area of our economy. Is that fair to say, Mr. David? Yes, uh, Senator, I would note, and this is something that hopefully resonates with this committee, um, if we didn't have the regulations, uh, obviously electrification is the future. If the U.S. is taking itself off the global stage for competition, for instance, okay. on average, we're exporting two million vehicles a year. So if the U.S. isn't competing on electrification and the rest of the world is, we've got a real risk. Well, that that's what yeah. BMW is trying to do in Volvo in South Carolina. Can you be for in, uh, EVs and against mining? Mr. Jenkins. Well, I think we need to source the requisite materials for the entire supply chain. And I'll note the environmental impact of that is substantially lower than mining billions of tons of coal or billions of tons equivalent so of oil each you, year that we well, light on fire. Okay, that's good. So if you're for EVs, you need to be for mining uh, here at home. Does that make everybody agree with that? If you're for EVs, you need to have a robust grid. Do you agree with that, Ms. Gross? I agree with that. Because the demand is real. Mr. Jenkins, are you opposed to natural gas as being part of the future of the grid? 
natural gas generation is going to remain a part of the grid for quite some time, particularly for capacity needs, so to meet peak demands. And so, so without natural gas, it'd be pretty unrealistic to meet the demand. Th that said, we're going to see a reduction in the amount of natural gas consumed by those power plants as we scale up uh, American renewable energy resources that can displace gas yeah, burnt, uh, as a if base not the capacity. As a baseload fuel, uh, renewables are going to get us to where we need to go without natural gas and nuclear we don't. power. Senator, we don't need a baseload fuel. What we need is a combination of resources that can meet all of our demands throughout the year. Renewables are great at supplying energy, but they're reliably unreliable. We know they're not going to be there all the time. So natural and so gas, gas is power plants like are dispatchable as well as nuclear power this plants, is a batteries, and other resources. I know I'm 18 seconds over here. What I want to do is just think it through. Uh, I'm at a car-heavy state, and they're making EVs, and I agree with that. I think the mandate is probably pushing us. I don't like it. But I think consumers are going to demand some electric vehicles. China is not going to change your policy. It seems to be a part of the, of the future economically. And if we don't watch it, we're going to be out of the battery business. And I would just like to have a rational approach to what I think is an irreversible trend, that there will be more electric cars over time, not less. And I think it would be a shame to not play in this space. For whatever reason drives you, no pun intended, uh, I think America is going to make some real hard decisions quickly. And if we do it, we will dominate this market, no matter how big it is or how small it might be. I'd like to dominate this market for a lot of reasons or at least be competitive. I met with the Chinese ambassador yesterday, and I'll close with this. I said, we're going to have an honest discussion about the way you produce electric cars. Get ready for that discussion.